Let's now think about type two regions. And you'll see that they're kind of very similar definitions and it's really a question of orientation. So type two regions, type, type two region is a region, I'll call it R2, that's the set of all x, y's, and z's in three dimensions such that, and now instead of thinking our domain, thinking of our domain in terms of Court of uh, in terms of y, x y coordinates, we're going to think of them in terms of y z coordinates, such that our y z pairs are a member of some domain. I'll call it D two since we're talking about type two regions, and and x is bounded below by some function of y z. So I'll call it g. I'll call it g one, g one of y z is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to some other function of yz, g2 of yz. And so you'll immediately see a very similar way of thinking about it, but instead of having instead of having z vary between two functions of x and y as we had in a type 1 region, we now have x varying between two functions of y and z. Now let's think about some of the shapes we explored. We, we saw that these two right up here, the sphere and the cylinder, were type 1 regions, but this dumbbell, the way that I oriented it here, was not a type 1 region. Let's think about which of these are type 2 regions and what might not be a type 2 region. So first, let's think about the sphere. So I have my axes right over here. Let me scroll down a little bit. So I got my axes. And so over here, our domain, we can still construct our sphere, but our domain is now going to be in the y, z plane. So y, z plane is, is this business right over here. So this will be our domain. I don't want to make it, want to make it more spherical than that. So our domain is this right over here in the y, z plane. That is our d2. D2. And now the lower bound, in order to construct a region, the solid region of the sphere, or, or the globe, or whatever you want to call it, the lower bound on x would be, would be kind of the back half of the sphere, the one that's away from us right over here. So the lower bound, so let me see how well I can wireframe it at first. The lower bound, I can do a better job than that. So it might go do something like that, and then do something like that, but this is if the domain right over here was transparent, but all we might catch, we'll just catch a glimpse of it in the back right over here. So it's the side of the sphere that's facing away from us. And then the upper bound on x would be the side of the sphere that's facing us. So if I were to do some contours, it might look something like this, and then look something, something like this. And then we would color in this entire, we would color in this entire region right over here. And x can take on all the values above that magenta surface and below this green surface. And essentially, it would fill up the globe for every x, z, for every y, z point in our domain. So a sphere is both a type 1 and a type 2 region. Actually, we're going to see it's going to be a type 3 region as well. What about this cylinder right over here? Can we construct it or think about it in a way that it would actually be a type 2 region? So let's try to do that. So let me. Paste it. So what if we had a domain? What if our domain was something like this? It was a rectangle in the yz plane. So it was a rectangle in the yz plane. So this is our domain, a rectangle in the yz plane. So that would be my d2. And what if the lower bound, the lower bound was kind of the back side of the cylinder? So the back side of the cylinder, try to draw it as good as I can. The back side of the cylinder, and so if we just saw the outside of it, it would look something like that. It's facing away from us, so we barely see it. If we could see through the cylinder or see through the the little flat cut of the cylinder, it would look something like that. So that over there would be our G1, and then our G2, and then our G2 would be the front side of the cylinder. The G2 could be the front side of the cylinder. G2 could be the front side of the cylinder, and so let me color it in as best as I can. So G2 would be the front side of the cylinder, and an X can vary above G1 and below G2, and it would fill up this entire cylinder. So we see that this same cylinder that we also saw was a type 1 region can also be a type 2 region. 
Now what about this hourglass thing that we saw could not be a type 1 region? Can this be a type 2 region? Well, let's think about it. Let's think about it. I'll do it the same way. We can construct a domain. So maybe our domain, it's in the y, well, it should be in the yz plane if we're talking about type 2 regions, or if we want to think of it as a type 2 region. So our domain could be this kind of flat hourglass shape that's in the yz plane. So our domain could be a region that looks something like this in the yz plane. So this is kind of flattened out. So this is our domain right over there. And then the lower bound on x, g1, could be a surface. It's a function of y and z that is kind of the back side, the back side of our hourglass. It's the back side of our hourglass. You could see, I'll try to show the contours from the underside right over there. So that could be our g1. And then our g2 could be the front side of the hourglass. It could be the front side of the hourglass. So my best attempt, my best attempt to draw the front side of the hourglass. And I could color it in. And so the way I somewhat confusingly drew it just now, you see that this hourglass oriented the way it is would actually be a type 2 region. Now, if we were to rotate it, if we were to rotate it like this, so let me draw it like this. So edit. So let me So if we were to make it like this, let me draw so that the top of my hourglass is facing us. I'll try my best to draw it. So Let's say the top intersects the x-axis right over there. The top, this is the bottom of my hourglass right over there. And then it, it bends in and then comes back out like that. So it bends in and comes back out just like that. For the same reasons that this was not a type 1 region, this now would not be a type 2 region. For any x, y, you're going to see that there's multiple points. There's multiple, for, sorry, for any z, y, you can see there could be multiple x points that are associated with the different points of this hourglass. You can't just have a simple lower and upper bound functions right over here. So this right over here is not, not a type, not a type 2 region. You could show, show a rationale, or this is going to be a type 1 region. You could create a, domain, a region over here in the xy plane and have an upper and lower bound functions for z, so you could be type 1. But this will not be type 2.